Welcome to another video from the farm. Today we're going to be talking about what do you actually need for an off-grid power system. So we get quite a few messages to the Facebook, at least one a week or so, of people asking me advice on how to set up their solar system, how to even where to begin, what do you need, how do you size your system, everything. Now, the basics of it when you're coming to set up your off-grid solar system is going to be the amount of money you want to spend the amount of power you're actually going to need and sort of the general faff you want to have in looking after your system. Now because of that it actually makes it sort of a relatively wide open subject on how to set up your system. You can basically spend as much money or as little money as you like. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually put together a little list of the things you need to power and you, therefore your total power consumption you're going to need off your solar system it's pretty easy calculations to do so i'll just sort of roughly run through it with you now so for example let's say we've got a couple of fridges lights a tv charging phones laptops that sort of thing and it averages out to 500 watts an hour worth of usage now you can find all that out the usages it'll be on the back of all your equipment or on the plug or if not google so let's say about 500 watts and you times that by 24 because that's how much power it's using on average each hour so that will give you 12 kilowatts worth of power so you would need 12 kilowatts of battery capacity usable battery capacity to hold the power you need to do a full day of what you want to do without having to have a generator or anything like that now I'm also a pretty firm believer that you should go well above and beyond what you actually think you're going to be using because there will be days 100% when you want way more power than you've got and it's always useful to have it in an off-grid scenario because quite often people don't have a portable generator on site i mean you might have a tiny little one for charging tools or something but you won't have one that you could then fit into your solar system separate to the one you've already got to be able to do more so i'd always go double on what you think you're going to need so then now you've got your couple of different types of solar system in various capabilities and that's mostly dependent on cost to be honest so if you're going cheap you're going to want to have a 12 volt or a 24 volt system because all of that equipment is super readily available on the internet for caravans camper vans boats all that sort of stuff but if you're wanting sort of actual proper consistent reliable full-time power you're going to want to go to a 48 volt high-end system so the differences in capabilities between your high and low end systems is actually going to be quite stark. So your low end systems really, your maximum going to be able to charge battery tools, that sort of thing. You're going to be able to run lights, charge a laptop, maybe run a fridge and TV consistently, but more than likely not. But if you want a system that's going to be anything like a sort of normal household system, you've basically got to go high end with it straight away otherwise you're going to have unreliable power and you're not going to have the same effectively as you would have from a grid connection so if you're going low end you'll get away with potentially broken cracked panels like i've got here as they're super super cheap it'll be about 20 30 pounds and a little cheap chinese ebay inverter will do you to come off your batteries like this one and your cheapest batteries are just going to be old car batteries like this. These are wired in um, in a 12 volt block here. You've added the two together to increase the amount of power I can store. Then you'll be wiring all those things into a little charge controller like this. Now these are, like I say, super cheap. £10 and up on eBay. So that's all the sort of stuff I've got knocking around from the very first system I put in here, which was primarily for charging tools things like that but we did run a little fridge on it for a little while but it wasn't the best it kept draining the batteries quite heavily I'll just walk down now and show you the double decker bus 24 volt power system which charges the bus's batteries for lights runs a 12 volt tv and uh, also provides supplemental power for the sort of the heating system and this is it working in the little utility shed next door all the panels which are on the roof i'll show you in a sec run to this and then these two cables here run to the batteries on the bus and then everything just runs from there so if you're doing a caravan or a camper van 
real easy to get going because you've already got the battery in there like the bus and then that's just two little 100 watt panels on the roof there straight into the little utility point and then into the bus batteries and like I say that's giving pretty much all the power for this at the moment but we're building it out so the bus battery is topped up by this battery system and then also a bigger inverter so we can run a fridge full time on this system as well but it's the winter time when that system falls down a little bit and there won't be enough power coming in off that little solar power system to charge the batteries up as you can see glorious weather here today so more than enough coming in those panels are constantly putting out a full power today but winter you're lucky if you get sort of 15 percent off your solar panel well, you can probably get away with that sort of system if you had a small generator wired in to the batteries as well with its own little inverter but charging system but that's going to be incredibly inefficient to charge and you're going to spend a lot of money on your generator fuel so what i've actually done in this scenario to save the small generator which leads me nicely onto the capabilities of a high-end system is i've wired in the bus to the mini grid that we have here for the main solar power system which i'll show you now as you may have seen in previous videos from the farm I upgraded our system massively, which is why I'm an advocate of get more than you need if you can. And as you can see here, we've got 10 kilowatt array on this roof here. And down on our chicken shed, we've got an 8 kilowatt array. And then that all runs into these big boy solar charge controllers, which is just a bigger version, effectively, of what I've just shown you in that little box for the low end system. But obviously, these are 48 volt and they're a better quality better brand so to speak and because of that they're more efficient they come with ridiculous warranties and it just basically makes the whole start of the system nice and easy then that power just transfers straight through these charge controller inverters directly through little fuses into our big lithium batteries we have here now we've got two of those again we had one in the original video you might have seen and I upgraded to two because you need more power than you think you're going to need as I keep hanging on about so as you can see the system's working perfectly it's only about lunchtime here now and the system's already fully charged we've got 1800 watts going on I'm about to slap another 2000 watts on get an AC unit on and uh, yeah this system will work perfectly all night as with having two of these batteries I've got 30 kilowatts of stored energy so as we've only got sort of about four hours of proper darkness at the moment I can pretty much run AC all the time without having the generator turn on which is ideal when it is 35 degrees outside yeah which I guess will make that point as well if you're sort of anywhere in a hot country you're going to be wanting to use a lot of power for your cooling that's a hundred percent and you are going to need a good system like this if you want to do so otherwise you are going to burn your batteries out your inverters out something you're going to burn out you need to go overkill because those sorts of constant drawer items like heaters and coolers use so much power it's yeah it's it's ridiculous you would be surprised how fast if it was winter time i plugged in the ac i'm going to plug in into this system how quickly it would drain these batteries with no sun it's basically three kilowatts and you've I usually only use 70% of the battery, so we're talking like four or five hours tops and then the generator's kicking on, which is no time at all, really. So hot countries, especially ones where you get quite a few dark hours, get your bigger batteries, get your bigger panels, bigger inverters so you can charge fast. You fully charge straight away in the morning before it actually gets hot in your house from the night before. Put your AC on, you're all good to go. Now with the bigger solar systems, you can actually build in lots of different redundancies as well. So not only do those charge controllers charge direct current straight from the panels to the batteries, they go straight from the panels to the inverters. So if we have a battery go or like I've had happen, a fuse go, these will still put power into the system. So we've still got power. And then we come the other end and we've got the solar charge controller here that comes off the chicken shed 
Now that's an AC inverter, so that puts AC power straight into the inverters here. So if we have the batteries go off and those other charge controllers go off, we've still got power coming from here in a different form. And then the final form of redundancy on here is this giant big box here. Now, as you can see, it's an on-off switch. That's a giant breaker for our big generator, which if I step inside the little box I've built for it out of old, believe it or not, big fridge panels they are effectively off a cold room. We have the big generator inside. Now, this is a massive generator. It's overkill for what we need even, but again, the believer of get more than you need. So I've got a bigger oversized generator. So then when it is on, it's working well, the inverters are working full bore charging. This thing's barely on tick over, so we're using not a lot of fuel at all to get a charge on our system when we don't have the solar coming in. And for me, that sort of reliability of power, that predictability of always being able to have power, is kind of essential to run farm stuff as well as actually have a life here, to have a household here. It's essential for me in this modern world we have, especially being YouTube, that sort of stuff, social medias, blah de blah need to have access to internet and power as a, a course of action for that. With the sort of triple redundancy of the system, I suppose actually quadruple redundancy, because I didn't show you there, but there's a block on the outside so I can actually go rent a generator from a machine hire place local, bring it here, plug that straight into the system. I've actually got, like I say, four redundancies for a power outage. So theoretically, I should never have a power outage here ever, where it was even on the grid, especially in this modern times when we're talking about rolling blackouts in the government and stuff like that. You've got unpredictable power. You'd, sometimes it can just go off for no reason at all. Well, no apparent reason anyway. I'm sure there is a very valid one. So something else which is fairly important you've got to think about is the maintenance of your system. What requirements are going to be need to be done to actually keep your power at a consistent level so you don't have outages because you're not maintaining things properly i.e you've got to make sure you've got to have spare fuses you've got to have enough fuel for your generator which is the crux of our system that's all we really need i mean we could do with maybe long term a spare inverter that sort of things which basically comes down to it with the high end versus low end system the low end system you're going to have a lot more maintenance issues basically you're going to have parts that are going to fail a lot more often because it's cheaper components faster made all that sort of jazz not as thick cable as it should be compared to the high-end system you can have relatively few problems so so far this system that we had upgraded just before christmas time been up and running seven months now and zero problems with it literally it's not even reset itself do you know what i mean it's it's perfect it runs 100 percent of the time guaranteed now, that also comes with warranties through the nose when you go for a high-end system. So all of the inverters, five-year warranties, all of the batteries, 10-year warranties, the solar panels, 25-year warranties on the ones on the chicken shed. I believe these are 35-year warranties on the good panels on the roof now. As I know from experience, you're going to be replacing bits all the time on a small system, whether it's small fuses popping or actually components going like your inverter charge control, that sort of thing. You go through quite a few of them, but if you get them on eBay, you might get another one sent for free if you send the complaint and whatnot. But sometimes you're just going to have to buy a brand new one or a different brand or something that you're more happy with. So it's sort of an ongoing expense with cheaper ones is you're buying cheap to buy twice. You do, you've got to expect to buy things multiple times, especially batteries if you're buying cheap batteries you're definitely going to have to buy new batteries far quicker than you would if you go for the higher end batteries which leads quite nicely on to the sort of savings you'll get so basically a small system will save you some money like obviously if you've got no power your only other option is to run a generator so comparatively with how fuel prices are now you're going to save a fair bit of money for only charging phones that sort of thing but when it comes to a higher end system you're going to be saving quite substantial sums of money so you got the higher end system because you're using more power so you equate that to a grid grid price which last year was maybe 16 17 p for most people and now that's above the 40p range believe it or not for most people in the uk which is an insane price jump now when you equate that price into it the high-end system we've got pays for itself in three years of our use our standard usage because we've got fridges coolers various lights tvs the backup bus charging lots of different constant drawers on the system anyway that would mean normal bill would probably be I don't know, on a household rate, probably close to sort of £800 a month or something. It'd be a good bill, that's for sure. 
But yeah, so this system is paying for itself time and time over within a couple of years now. Which, as I've mentioned in another video, combined with the warranties, it kind of just makes sense to go for the off-grid system because you're going to save money and you you can't really lose. I mean, the companies that you get the higher-end stuff off, they're big, legitimate companies. They aren't going to refuse warranties. That's if you maintain it through proper companies, you buy them through a proper company, etc., you're just going to get the bits replaced if they break. So it's sort of a win-win at the moment with installing a solar system. So definitely recommend get more power than you need and get a higher end system that sort of leaves me on to my final thoughts and of the situation and yeah 100 percent go for the higher end system as i've just said it's definitely worth it in the long run money savings wise as well as if you're any kind of scenario like me you're spending ridiculous money to get grid connection here so if you spend sort of 15 20 percent of the cost of that like i have on an off-grid system you're saving all round and don't forget you can finance a lot of equipment these days very very easily with an okay credit rating if you've got business you can basically finance whatever you want equipment wise as long as you've got turnover so don't be scared to get the better system when you're first starting out because believe me the hassle it will save having good stuff straight away in terms of power consistent power it will make your life a hell of a lot easier when trying to set up anything like this. If you're trying to set up your own off-grid homestead type stuff, you believe it or not, you think you'll get away with power. But if you've experienced the modern world at all, you'll soon realise you miss that power. Especially if you're anything like me and you really like cold drinks and you really like watching TV and playing computers. You definitely need a lot of power for that. We're doing another video pretty soon on sort of the direct physical costs of everything when it comes to labor component parts all that sort of jazz of installing your own sort of micro grid off grid power system solar system that we have and also how much it would cost you to build a small one for like i've got for the bus there don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see that video but um i hope i've given you some base knowledge of whether to go low or high here and like I say, my opinion, go for the high end if you can. But yeah, if you've got any experience of this as well, let people know if you've had any issues with a smaller system or if you've got a higher end system, anything you've got positive to say about it, or even negative if you don't like your high end system and you think it's a waste of money, drop that in the comments below too because I'm interested to hear that one because I only know one other person that's got a similar sort of system to me and they love it too, like it makes their life so convenient. So I'm interested to know if you've been having problems with yours. Alright then, we'll wrap this video up here. Until next time then, bye-bye.